If you've been told that yoga or walking help build bone density, you've been misled. In fact, studies show postmenopausal women who only walk actually lose bone mass, just slower than those who do nothing. So what does work? Let's look at the research. Here's what you can expect to learn. First, we'll cover yoga, then walking, then we'll talk about the physiology of bone building exercise, followed by practical strength training, as well as safety tips. Just because it's effective doesn't mean it's safe. Before we jump in, who am I? My name is Igor. I'm the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets. As well, I run an online personal training company that specializes in osteoporosis reversal. And just so you don't think I'm a random guy on the internet with an opinion, uh, I'm actually a personal trainer myself who works one-on-one -on -one with clients and actually sees the effects of these methods. Here's one example. Here is Darlene, who was a jock up until the age of 46, and then she was diagnosed with breast cancer, went through uh, chemotherapy, radiation, and eventually estrogen blockers, and as expected, but not desired, her bone density went down, and with what you learn here, she were able to turn that around. Here is Laura, who had a long family history of osteoporosis, and sure enough, she had as well. Hers was extremely severe, and we were able to improve her bone density by between 4 and 7% in one year. And here is Anne, who was active, fit, ate a vegan diet, and yet still developed osteoporosis, to her surprise, but not ours, and we were able to improve her bone density as well in a fairly short period of time. So let's jump in. Let's talk about yoga. Here is one study titled, Effects of Yogasanas on Osteoporosis in Postmenopause Women. Here's what this study looks like. For six months, uh, 30 women were recruited between the ages of 45 and 62. They did four sessions of yoga per week for one hour each. Here were the results after six months. There was a tiny little improvement in T-scores from minus 2.69 to minus 2.55. Now, T-scores are kind of a proxy marker for what really matters. So it's, it's not bonus that matters, it's really fracturous that matters. So how does this improvement uh, change fracturous? It actually doesn't. This change is so minimal, it will have no impact on fractures. Uh, next, let's look at another study titled, Effect of Yoga on Health-Related Outcomes in People at Risk of Fractures. Here's, here are the results. Bone density in this systematic review was completely unchanged. And again, this is not just bone density. This is fracture risk as well. And again, this is a systematic review, not a single study. A systematic review is an aggregate of many studies on the topic. And in aggregate, it shows that yoga is not effective for uh, increasing bone density. It's good at stopping bone loss, but that's not good because your bone your bone density is already low. You want an increase in bone density, bone mass, and bone strength. There's also, that study found, potential harm. There are fractures for people pushing the end ranges of spinal flexion or extension. So poses like these and poses like back bends, these should be very, very careful. Not necessarily avoided, but careful. It's important to, the, to do avoid the end range of these. So it's, a, it's okay to do these poses, just don't go all the way to your, uh, to your, completely to your limit. Next, let's talk about walking, one of the most commonly prescribed exercises for osteoporosis. After all, it's weight bearing. Is it effective though? Here's a study titled, The Effectiveness of Physical Exercise on Bone Density in Osteoporotic Patients. In this study, bone mass was measured in postmenopausal osteoporotic women. And here were the results. They lost bone mass, they just lost it slower than women who didn't exercise. Here are four things that could happen to bone density. If you're completely sedentary, you do nothing, bone density declines quickly. If you walk, it's a little bit better than declining quickly, but you still decline, you just decline slower, which is terrible. Um, you want to reverse the decline, you want to increase bone mass, not decrease it slower. Better yet is to stabilize already low bone mass. But that's, again, not a good standard because bone density, bone mass are already low and you're maintaining low bone mass. You want to increase bone mass and that's what strength training can do. So why don't yoga and walking strengthen bones? For the simple reason is that they are not strength training. To strengthen bones, you need strength training, that which begs the question, what is strength training? People often think that it's about the equipment. If I'm using a dumbbell, a barbell, or a kettlebell, I am strength training, but that's not the case. Strength training is not about the equipment. It's about the strength of the muscular contraction. And what is the minimum, minimum threshold? Uh, that minimum threshold is between 70 to 80% of your maximal contraction. So here's what I mean by that. If you were to lift 
to find a weight that you can only lift one time and you use 70 to 80% of that weight, that is the minimum threshold necessary to make muscles and bones stronger. Below that threshold, muscles will get stronger, bones will not, okay? And so how does that translate to actual repetitions? You should find a weight you can lift no more than 12 repetitions. If you were to attempt a 13th repetition, you should not be able to do it, okay? Why does this matter? One is it activates fast twitch type 2x muscle fibers, which generate the kind of force needed to trigger bone growth. Now, I understand if I just said some physiology that you don't know, so let's break it down. There are three kinds of muscle fibers. There's type 1, type 2a, and type 2x. This is the equivalent of red meat and white meat. So here are the differences. Type 1 fibers are what are called endurance fibers. In other words, they have a lot of endurance, but not a lot of power and they are slow to contract. Type 2X fibers are the exact opposite. They have a lot of power, um, a lot of speed, but they don't have a lot of endurance. So we use different type fiber types for different, uh, different things. And type 2A is an in-between type 1 and type 2X. If you're just walking, you're definitely not using type 2A or type 2X. You're just using type 1. If you're doing yoga, you're using pre predominantly type 1, a little bit of type 2A, and guaranteed no type 2X. It's those type 2X fibers that need to be activated in order for muscles and bones to get stronger. Okay? And again, I want to emphasize, strength training is not about equipment. It's about intensity. Okay? Furthermore, bones adapt to stress. When you load them properly, they rebuild stronger. You need to have the right stimulus to get the right response. The right response is bone strengthening, bone growth. If the stimulus is too weak, for example, walking or yoga, they are too weak of a stimulus to make bones stronger. Just because they're difficult, and I hope walking is not difficult, but yoga could be, just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's effective. You have to separate difficulty from effectiveness. The second point is that jump training also works because it creates high impact force, but it must be introduced gradually, and I'll discuss that in future videos. So here's a study about strength training. It's titled, Stronger Back Muscles Reduce the Incidence of Vertebral Fractures, a Prospective 10-Year Follow-Up of Postmenopause Women. The reason I like this study is because it's a nice long follow-up. And here were the results. Bone density improved by between 1% to 4% as a result of strength training, but that bone density improvement, what we really want to know is how likely are you to break a bone? So what is your fracture risk? A 1% to 4% improvement in bone density from strength training corresponds to a 62.8% drop in fracture risk. I want to emphasize that this is from strength training. An equivalent improvement of 1% to 4% from other means doesn't have this kind of fracture risk reduction. And that's because fracture risk is dependent on more than just bone density. Yes, it's a factor, but it's not the only factor. Balance is also another factor. Muscle strength is another factor. Now, balance and muscle strength cannot be assessed with a bone density test. The bone density test assesses bone density. Here's another study titled Effectiveness of Resistance Training or Jumping Exercise to Increase Bone Mineral Density in Men with Low Bone Mass. So here were the results. Um, before and after. So jumping also improves bone density slightly, but again, the important thing is fracture risk. By how much does it reduce fracture risk? Quite significantly. Not as great as strength training, by the way, but significantly enough. Here are some important concepts. Body pump classes are not strength training. I will often ask, uh, people, clients, and so on, do you do strength training? They will often say, I do body pump classes. Body pump classes are not strength training. They are cardio with weights. That's not a bad thing. Cardio is good for you, but it's good for your heart, not your bones. Don't stop doing it if you like it. But if you're doing it for the sake of bone strengthening, figure out a different solution, like strength training or jump training. The second concept is that not everything that strengthens muscles also strengthens bones. For example, you can do strength training with lighter weights and, and more repetitions, and it will strengthen your muscles initially, but it won't strengthen your bone. A third concept is that not everything that strengthens bones also strengthens muscles. For example, jumping strengthens bones, but does not strengthen muscles. Also, the devil is in the details. What I mean by that is that you need the proper exercise prescription. Just because you're strength training doesn't mean you're strength training the right way for osteoporosis. So what are the details. What is the right way for osteoporosis? Those details are, you need the right number of days per week, the right number of sets, the right number of reps, and the right tempo. Okay. 
Furthermore, stay tuned to the, uh, to the end to learn the secret sauce of weight training for bone strength. There's more to it than these four elements, okay? So the next question you're probably wondering is which exercises should I do? Exercises depend on where you have the worst bone SE or the, the lowest T-scores. And so in the lumbar spine, one great exercise is lateral bends. You'll see it in this picture here. This works the muscles that connect the hips to the ribs, called the quadratus lumborum, as well as other muscles that tilt the spine sideways. Um, so that's a great exercise. Another one is deadlifts and one-legged deadlifts. Uh, so you lift the bar from the floor up to your hips while keeping your elbows straight. Next, two more exercises are reverse hypers, same thing for the lumbar spine, as well as good mornings. So you can see that right here. Next, to improve the T-scores at the total hip and the femoral neck, deadlifts work double duty. They work both. Uh, they, they work every site where you have low bone density, which is your total hip, your femoral neck, and your lumbar spine. Squats don't work the lumbar spine very much, but they do improve T-scores um, at both the total hip and the femoral neck on condition that you go all the way down. Try to get your butt to your heels. Lastly, the wrist is frequently not measured, but that's too bad because the wrist often has the lowest T-scores. And so how do you strengthen the wrist? One way to do it is to do wrist curls as well as wrist extensions. Okay, and you can pause these videos um, to see exactly how to do it and to zoom in on this. If you want to dive deeper, I have an entire exercise library devoted to different exercises for osteoporosis where I actually show them. Now, here are some more details. If the T-score is worse than minus 3.2, you should be exercising two to four times per week for three to four sets of eight to 12 repetitions with a fast tempo. Try to lift the weight as quickly as possible and lower it for a count of four. If the weight is appreciably heavy, it will not move fast, but it's your intention to move it fast. That's what really matters. So that's if your T-score is worse than minus 3.2. But what if the T-score is better than minus 3.2? Everything else stays the same except for the sets and the reps. So the sets now go up to four to five, but then the reps go down to five to eight. And that's because the weight goes up, okay? And the tempo stays the same. You wanna lift it fast and lower it slowly. Now. The secret sauce is progression in weight. So what you want to do is you aim for the highest number of reps in the rep range. For example, if you are doing eight to 12 reps, aim for 12 every single time. If you are able to do the upper, uh, the upper number of reps on at least one of those sets, next workout, raise the weight. Don't wait for the weight to become easy. Even if it was difficult, but you did it with good technique, increase the weight anyway. One common mistake people, especially women make with osteoporosis is that they can do it for 12 reps or they can do it for eight reps. And yet they're, they're, they think this is heavy. I should wait until it becomes light. Don't do that. If you can do it with good technique, move on to the next one immediately. Next workout. Safety tips. Again, avoid the end ranges of spinal flexion, spinal extension, and spinal rotation. You can do all those moves, just don't push the end range. Stay about 20% shy of the end. Now, if you wanna dive deeper into both strength training, jumping, as well as nutrition and supplementation, I've created an entire video called the Stronger Bones Checklist, which is not available on YouTube. If you go to this link on your screen right now or in the description below, you'll be able to get uh, to, to download this video.